This horse uh, was narrowly beaten in a restricted race at Werribee. He's a lovely big horse. He's by uh, Royal Academy. I think he's the improving type horse. Of the others, certainly Mr Millennium. He's had the two runs now. He's ready. I marked them 2, 1, 16 and 6. That was Hoy, uh, Roy Higgins there <laughs> with uh, his thoughts on race 7. Letsy is over behind the barrier. And I think he's going to talk to me this time. Is it something I said before, Letsy? It is, Pete. If, when you said something about a windbag or something. Oh, righto. I had, I had the Quinella in that race too. Did you? Yes. <laughs> hey, guys, look, the, uh, the one horse looks terrific. He's a massive horse, this horse, another marauder. He makes Banjo look like a Shetland pony. But he looks terrific. The decorator looked very well. And, gee, the, uh, the 16 looks well. Koichnoi looked terrific. He's very relaxed. And if I was a betting man, I'd have something on the 16 horse. OK, time for you to shush now, let's see, because they're all set. And Dan and Gary are going to take over. Yes, thanks, Peter. Look, I, I agree. I, I thought the 1 and 2 looked absolutely superb going down. And I thought the 6, when I leave Freeman's ridden by Damien Oliver, looked very well. And also the one, the 16, Koichnoi, is it, of uh, Bart Cummings. But the 1 and 2, gee... The one, as Johnny said, it's a massive horse, looks beautiful, ridden by Brett Preble. What more could you want? And uh, the decorator ridden by Mark Flaherty. He's, right, he's a superb rider, Mark, but he's uh, unfortunately a bit heavy. They're just one to go in, I think. National bit to come up to the gates with Larry Cassidy. Well, it's great to see Bev Bucking in here. I went out to see her at the Austin Hospital. I suppose there'll be a lot of you people out there watching and the nurses and people who look after them. You do a great job. All the best to you. National bid in. They're all ready now. $4.90 for number two, the decorator. $5 for number one, another marauder. Off and racing. Merlin's Law missed it by about two lengths. And one of the first to jump away, Mr. Millennium with Bridge House. And from the outside, or towards the outside, Van Allen going across in search of the lead. Keeping a forward spot was the Decorator and also Trabeel and Coup de Gras are up there. So good charge for the early lead. Another Marauders in the top half a dozen or so as they go to the turn at the 1400. Coup de Gras working its way to the lead from Van Allen. And on the inside, the Decorator, Bridge House fourth and Trabeel was running fifth. A length and a half away then to Baron Chelly and on the inside, Mr. Millennium. Another length to another Marauder inside National Bid, about two lengths to Lady Solville on the outside of Educate. Then Garnier and Collins Street, Zealy Lad, Corchnoy and Merlin's Law is back last. A thousand metres to travel now and the leader is Coup de Gras by a neat length. Second Van Allen, the decorator with the box seat running third, Bridge House is fourth. And then came Baron Chelly, next is Trabeel. A length away National Bid, just up in front of it Mr Millennium. Another Marauder's about midfield down on the inside. Next was Educate from Lady Solville. Back behind the Merlins, Law the Grey from Garnier, then Collins Street, Corchnoy getting up along the fence, and Zeely Lad last 10 off the lead as they round the turn, 600 metres to travel. Coup de Gras in front, about a length clear as they make their way around the bend from Bridge House giving chase as they turn for home, running up behind them, Trabeel, the decorator left the fence, Corchnoy getting through, then Mr Millennium into the straight, Coup de Gras in front of Van Allen, then came Trabeel, Corchnoy sticking to the rails for Cassidy's made ground, then Mr Millennium, another marauder under the whip, and then the decorator battling on, it's Van Allen, Coup de Gras, Corchnoy running on Collins Street, Garnier wider, Collins Street swept up, they hit the lead with 100 to go, went past Corchnoy, it's Collins Street going for home for Dine, it kicked clear of Corchnoy, and Col Collins Street's coming away to win it well. It's uh, down to the post, Collins Street by two lengths to Corchnoy. Third's very close between Trabeel and Merlin's Law, a good run. Then Garnier Educate. Next home, Van Allen from Coup de Gras, the decorator. Pretty ordinary run, so was another marauder. So was Mr Millennium. Then National Bid Baron Shelley, Zeely Lad and Lady Solville at the end of the field with Bridge House. Well, it was a, certainly a race of changes the last... Uh... 250 metres down. Collins Street's got home right over the top of him, but Jim Cassidy's ride on Corchnoy was just brilliant. 14 gets third to Merlin's Law. It was the one that missed the start by two lengths. Yes, uh, Jim was way back in the field and he kept persevering for runs. There he is, you can see him. We've, we've rounded the winner here. We'll put the circle on it, Shane Dye's mount. He's come out and the one on the inside is Jim Cassidy. And Jim's persevering looking for runs. Shane's looking for a run on the outside here. And there's two good jockeys. Shane's been missing out on runs all over the carnival, but last luck starting to come his way. There's Jimmy Cassidy in those checkered colours, the checkered cap. You can see he hasn't left that fence. And at this stage, Jimmy would have most probably thinking, gee, I've ridden this a treat, I'm going to get the money here. And then he'll get through and he'll look out on the outside, and there's Shane Dye coming down. Shane's got to run on the outside. 
get up in Pepe. But uh, when you see a jockey ride a race like Jim Cassidy's ridden that horse, you love to see them win because, boy, he's done nothing wrong. And all the shame, he's uh, ridden for luck and he's got it this time. Favourites ordinary, Gary. I thought they all had fairly cosy runs and hadn't spent a penny and they didn't do anything. That's right. Now, here's a, here's a great uh, shot head on. Chain's about four from the outside. The reddish colours, there he's got the circle on. And Jim Cassidy, he's back right on the fence back there. And you can see both these boys, this is what it's all about when you're looking for runs. You can see Shane's trying to get through here. He hasn't got any room. Now he gets into the clear, pushes between these horses, and there's Jimmy right on the fence. He's getting up there. But I think Johnny Letts would have Shane die with him. Yep. And Shane will be pretty wrapped. That's two up now. Yeah, Shane, visual displays. Another ride like visual displays, wasn't it, Colin Street? Yeah, well, I've been riding pretty well this carnival, having horses in every um, winnable position. And unfortunately, they haven't been finding the line, so to just today I decided I was going to ride them all quiet, ride them back a bit and see if they can get to the line. And <laughs> I've ridden two winners that have been outsiders. Two winners and, and no bias in the track, chain. There's no bias at all. No, no. Good luck to you. You've got the power. They're, they're with you now, the crowd. Yeah, thank you. Good luck to you, Shane. Johnny Leitz out there with the winning rider, Shane Dye, having completed a double here on Crown Oaks Day, and we're just waiting for Cliff Brown to make his way down to the mounting yard. Fine young trainer, he's got a wonderful setup down at Narbathong. And these horses are very fit because they run up and down hills most of the time. And uh, that enables them to finish their races off very well. And that's exactly what this one has done. Right down the bottom, number 18, Collins Street. Shane Dye riding his second winner of the day for Cliff Brown, who still hasn't made his way into the mounting yard. He's being a little bit bashful at the moment, but it was still a fine performance by uh, that gelding, which has only had eight starts and uh, has now completed its second victory. And here's Cliffy coming down to the mounting yard now. Well done, mate. Yeah, thanks, mate. Really good, strong performance. Yeah, nice horse. Yeah. Right, gets to the line all right, doesn't he? Yeah, he'll really make a horse. So, uh, oh, it's exciting. So he's still got a bit to learn about the caper because he's only having his eighth start tonight. Yeah, lots to learn, but he's always showing me something. Now, you've had a good association with Shane Dye. You're unlucky that you didn't have a runner together in the Caulfield Cup. And you've stuck with him? I like him. I mean, he's, uh, last year rode winners for us. This year he's ridden winners for us. Uh, you just leave it to him and he's happy enough and uh, he does the job. It's amazing that Darren Gatchy, who had his critics, won the Oaks the race before. And Shane Dye, who's had his critics, now brings up a double. That's right. Yeah, that's the way it goes, doesn't it? Answer them the best possible way. Yeah, I hope people start giving me a bit of a bag and I might come good. So Never do that to you, go. mate. Okay, thank you. Cliffy Brown, the winning trainer with Collins Street. We'll head to a break after the running of the seventh event as Shane Dye heads back towards the scales. You're watching Network 10's live and exclusive coverage of the third day of the 1999 Melbourne Cup Carnival from fantastic Flemington. Day 1999, that is coming apparently, but uh, we hope it's oh, about an hour and 20 minutes away and then no one's going to mind. We'll be off the television by then. But uh, storm is predicted with a few showers later in the afternoon. There's our Goodyear blimp or light ship if you like, if you want to be nice about it, I suppose. I like blimp personally. All right, we're after correct weight from Mr. Gleason. And here it is. The ritual. Thank you. <laughs> Over to the stand, we get the double wave when he's happy. It looks like he is. Yep. Correct weight. Magic correct weight, that means we can pay you some money. Here's Danny. Yes, Tim, the winner at $20.40 and $6.20 Collins Street. Portnoy, $3 and Merlin's Law, $13.30. Trifecta was big, $11,371.40. The Quinella paid $103.90. Exact at $293 and the race to race double $199.40. That's two winners he's had for the carnival, but he's finished in the placings on many occasions, uh, Shane Dye. And you mentioned before the race there was a nibble for Collins Street there, Tim. It certainly was, Dan. It was um, in about five points. It paid, yeah, it was down the bottom. Everyone thought that Shane might be able to pull a double off. So congratulations to him and commiserations to me who missed out by a short half head for the trifecta and paid $11,000. So it could have been a good carnival. Instead, that's just punter's lament. In this one, the bottom one, Far Rain, opened up. Odds on on the tote, you can get black money down here. Dollar for dollar, Peter Donegan. It's uh, a tough day when you get beaten by a short half head. 
Oh, well, never mind, Tim. Uh, far range, Jen. Yes. It'll be interesting to see whether the bookmakers take a risk with her, but surely you wouldn't think she'd be uh, able to be beaten on her performance on well, Saturday, would you? Well, she does get in with a really light weight with 50 kilos, Peter, but they're all beatable. Yeah, well, I don't think she is here. Well, I, she's not unbeatable, but I think she'll win at $1.80 and $1. So if she's beatable, what's going to beat her? Well, I must admit, I think she's going to be very hard to beat, but just at the odds, you have to go for a little bit of uh, value here. Number five, Dantler, she goes very well down the straight and she is ready to improve. Number ten, Farrain, the hardest to beat, put her in for second. Number one, Toledo, a grand old galloper down the straight, he's terrific horse. Well, you're all by yourself, Dandelion. Yes. Get the value for Jennifer Farrain after that flying performance in the Salinger for the rest of us. Should be one of the highlights. We've already seen the first of the big highlights, and that was the Crown Oaks. The Emirates Classic is the next of the highlights. Race 8 coming up at 4.05. That is Eastern Daylight Saving Time. It is round about 27 minutes away. We head to a break now. Hope you're enjoying day number three from Flemington, the Carnival of 99. Hollywood has hit Springfield. I'm wearing a jacuzzi suit. And everybody's a star. Are you Drew Barrymore? Enjoy the action. Yeah. With lights, camera, Simpson, 7.30 Sunday. and Samsung team up to give great deals on refrigerators like this 240 litre frost free bottle for just $5.99 or a new release 389 litre frost free with multi adjustable wire shelves and wine rack $9.99 and for $21.99 you can buy our top of the range feature packed 560 litre intellect frost free model. When it comes to refrigerators come to Harvey Norman for a great deal on Samsung. What a team! Ah, oh, there's nothing like a vacation for unstiffening one's tail and getting the wildebeest out of one's whiskers. Good company, the calm of the ocean, and the particular effervescence of Schweppes. Mmm. Oh, would you believe it? Christopher. Huh? Be right back. Frightfully ugly, but useful nonetheless. Schweppes, just a little more bite. If you need new tyres for your car, the new Goodyear Auto Service Centre catalogue is being delivered now. Because we don't just sell it if it's Goodyear, we sell it if it's good. Call 132343 for your local store. New Breach Antibacterial with Microban not only keeps your teeth clean, it keeps itself clean with a unique hygiene halo where bacteria can't go. So, for the confidence of a superior clean, reach out for Breach. I just want them clean. Finish. Double action tablets. With enzymes. So easy. Detergent like it should be. I'm sold. Wow, look at this dish. Finish tablets. Unbeatable clean first time, every time. It's happening soon. Canberra's Craft to Life Craft Show. With exhibitors from throughout Australia, there's something for everyone. From quality craft products to workshops to craft supplies, there's a woodworking demonstration and kids' activities. A great family day out at the Canberra Convention Centre. The new season fashion collection has arrived at Purple Daisy 2 with Florian over. You can still surround yourself with sensational colours and styles at Purple Daisy 2, your leading leisure and resort wear fashion boutique. Don't think gold. Think chrome. It's the latest place to go. It's the place to meet. It's the place to be. It's the place to dance. It's the place. It's the Chrome Nightclub, Bell Collin. Fly in right now to Inski's huge blade and skateboard sale. All the big brands are up to half normal prices. Every skate and board in store is discounted to clear. This sale cannot last, so don't miss out. Get into Inski, 32 Botany Street, Phillip. Sylvester Stallone. If anyone has a better idea, now's the time to tell me. Hold your breath. Just please, just try and get us out of here. The network premiere, 8.30 Sunday on 10, Daylight. Very hard to concentrate simply on the horses today. There are so many wonderful sights at this glorious race course, Ladies' Day. 
Oaks Day, 1999. And uh, even the fellas look pretty good today too. Uh, they're out to impress the ladies. And I'm sure there'll be a few conversations started up in the Champagne Bar later on. Maybe by the connections of Collins Street, the winner of the previous event, to make the presentation the Deputy Chairman of Chadston Shopping Centre in Gandell. Chadston, the fashion capital, is proud to be involved in the Ladies' Day at Flemington through our sponsorship of the Chadston Fashion Plate. Our congratulations go to Lee Afrati to accept on behalf of the owners and I have great pleasure in presenting the Chadston Fashion Plate to Mr Lee Afrati. Look at those happy connections. Do you reckon they were happy when that horse flew down the outside Collins Street to provide Shane Dye with his second winner of this uh, Oaks Day. Well, the big one coming up is the Group 2 Emirates Classic over the straight 1,200 metre course. It's going to be a terrific race. Far rain, as we saw before, has come up pretty short, round about the $1.80 mark. That is for a $1 investment on Super Tab. But on the performance in the Salinger Stakes on Saturday, you would think that she is very, very hard to beat. She's already trimmed up about 30 cents from her opening quote, $323,000 in the wind pool. Toledo's given a chance. He loves this track. Flavor knows nothing else but to uh, give of his best every time he steps out. Dantelar is Jennifer's tip at $6.60. Spargo won the Ascot Vale Stakes down the straight course here at $9.40, and he has been constant throughout. But we're going to have another look at this flying three-year-old filly, Farrain. She is one of the talents of the turf, and she will be having just her sixth race start today. Looking forward to that coming up. That is race eight on the card. Dantelar from Jennifer, Farrain from the rest of us, and we're looking forward to seeing her fly up the straight. She went up there in uh, a tick over 1.7 the other day, about the third fast we've ever seen here. Gold Ace holds the record. I don't think they'll be breaking any records today, but Tim, I am really looking forward to seeing this filly because I think she might be something out of the ordinary. Yeah, Peter, she certainly looks it, and uh, I've got the champs with me, as you can see. <laughs> Our world champion netballers, Vicky Wilson, Jenny Borlais, Liz Ellis, morning. Good morning. Well, it's morning for me, <laughs> afternoon. Um, now, my producer just did it, and I want you to tell me truthfully, every time I call you guys girls, the switchboard lights up and they say they're not girls, they're ladies. Do you mind or not? Well, at Ladies' oh, Day we now. have to be ladies, don't we? Yeah. Well, you do, Liz. You look very ladylike today. Yes. You are looking gorgeous. <laughs> now, give them a plug because I think uh, they've outfitted you beautifully. Who yeah. did that for you? Walmart. Walmart, our yeah. sponsor. So, and then they came good with the hats for yeah. Oaks Day. So, yeah, we were very, very and impressed. Maria. She's very done impressed. a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't be at Oaks Day without a hat. Oh, absolutely not. Very not the done thing. No, That's the right. call went out as soon as we knew we were coming down. We need hats. OK, now, uh, been a huge week for you. The parade in Sydney must have been fantastic, Vicky. Yeah, it was awesome. I yeah. think that really was the icing on the cake for us, and it was a great way for uh, us to celebrate our win and also uh, thank the people of Sydney in particular for their wonderful support. And it was great to receive that recognition. It certainly was. Jenny, uh, I think a whole lot of new people watched that final between you and the Kiwis, and that's great for netball. It is. Um, it was just great that uh, perhaps a new audience that hadn't seen netball in the past, so many people that I've spoken to either caught the whole game or at least the last quarter. And I think um, probably a very fond memory and hopefully they'll continue to support the sport in the way that they um, perhaps have just started to now. Yeah, well Mark Aston, who uh, covered it for us, said that he's been covering sport a while now and he calls footy. He said it was the most exciting contest he'd ever been involved with. So that's, that he sure does. And that's from his point of view. So from your point of view, it must have been just outrageous. Oh, it was awesome, Tim. And it's so funny when you watch the replay, Mark and Anne get, do get so excited. <laughs> and Anne really can't spit out anything except for everybody's name. And you can see there on the footage, we were just so excited. I've never had a feeling like that before in my life. And just to end up yeah. on the bottom of that that ruck there it was <laughs> it was heaps of fun it was so magnificent no, everything's pretty quick here uh, during melbourne cup week but just quickly you are definitely retiring that's it for you but skirt's been hung up yeah, yeah skirt's been hung up <laughs> you are thinking about it Jen. mine's in the washing machine i'm not sure what to do with it <laughs> oh pull it back out again pull it back we'll out and you'll definitely be at the next world championships in jamaica in jamaica hopefully if i keep doing the right thing by the selectors i'd love to be there well you've been congratulated by the whole world this week and uh, <laughs> Uh, all of the people here have joined in and uh, great effort. Good on you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Our world champion netballers and Sandra Sully, you've got uh, a bloke who I remember from, uh, you won't mind me saying, a fair while ago, uh, John Michael Housen. 
I am very lucky to have John Michael joining me, one of the men who has the best jobs in the world and uh, a, not just Australian world famous entertainment reporter, but I think worldwide, John Michael. You report for so many different groups, don't you? And most importantly, it's great to have you home. Well, thank you very much. It's one, what a time to come back. It's marvellous. Haven't been to the Cup for about 10 years, believe it or not, to the Spring Racing Carnival. Well, what's uh, different? We need your impressions because you're a Melbourne boy. What have you noticed of the big changes? Well, it's a lot more sophisticated, I think, with the big corporate sponsorships and those marvellous marquees. I mean, people used to just really throw up a tent. Now they really build buildings. I could move into the Emirates thing and live there. <laughs> I think that's terrific. They've got to give it away. Give it to me. I can live in it. It's fabulous. So that's become a big thing. They always had it, but nothing to the degree that it is now. And I think it seems to be a lot of younger people, I've noticed, a lot of people that uh, may, may not have gone to the races back when I was regularly going to them. Now, good morning, Australia. You're a regular there, and, and we generally only get to enjoy you via satellite. How much nicer is it to come home and sort of make contact, reacquaint yourself with a lot of old oh, friends and faces? wonderful. Because, you see, I do that, and I'm doing it into a, in a studio by myself. It's all automated, so it's really weird, and I think, I wonder if anyone's watching this, because it just goes out into the ether, and it's nice to go back and people stop me in the street, oh, I love you on bird, or whatever, 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 and you think, oh, I've actually being seen by people, I'm being heard on you know, Ernie's show or John Law's show, whatever, they're hearing me. So it, it's good. It's lovely to know that you are actually being seen and heard. Oh, you're always being seen and heard, John Michael, but, but it is great to have you back home. I want to know, have you backed any winners today? Have you managed Do to get you... to the track? I haven't even had a bed. True confessions I of an entertainment had a bed. reporter. I've been socialising. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Come to the, well, some people come to the races and don't even see the horses. If it was any different, I'd be disappointed. John Michael, it's great to have you back in Thank Australia. We hope much. you're enjoying the Cup. Great to have you back after 10 years. It's lovely being here. All right, right, we'll see you soon. Back to you, Tim. Thank you, Sandra. I tell you what, if Sandra was allowed to compete in fashions on the field, she'd have to be in the trifecta, wouldn't she? She looked absolutely beautiful today. I can tell you there's 83,000... I missed the last bit from my producer. I think it's 600 and something. 870. 83,870. That's about 6,500 up on last year. So what's that make it? We've got 176, 180. We've got 260-odd already. And there was only 285,000 last year. So a record coming up with Emirates Stakes Day to come. Don't they look great? It's the Oaks on 10. The International Race Course of Australia. Flemington on Oaks Day 99. Approaching 84,000 people here on a magnificent day little storm approaching but at the moment that seems to be holding right off and I reckon another hour and we'll make it huge crowd just such a tribute to the people of Melbourne in particular and everybody else who comes to Flemington during these four wonderful days of the carnival well you know fashions on the field's been around for quite some time before we go to Lynn Talbot for today's fashions let's have a little look at what it looked like back in the 60s a gay scene of packed stands and, as always, a fashion show for the ladies. But this year, the VRC announced a spectacular Fashions on the Field contest in which every woman attending will have a chance to win one of the £8,000 in prizes. For instance, there's a brand new car for the lady who, according to the judges, wears the best ensemble which does not exceed £30 retail value. One lady won't walk home from the races. With an outfit which does not exceed £50 retail value, there's something special to be won. A return sea trip to London and three days at Royal Ascot. Well then, it looks like 62 is ladies' year. A special prize for Derby Day will take the best dressed woman to surface paradise for a couple of sunny weeks. Or what about a cruiser holiday, all expenses paid on the Gippsland Lakes? That's a list of prizes we'll all drink to. Well, this morning, some of Flemington's best dress presented themselves here in the Fashions on the Field enclosure for the final round of heats for the Maya Fashions on the Field competition. And, of course, no shortage of entrants because the winner takes home a trip for two to Paris, a $10,000 Maya wardrobe, $5,000 spending money and their weight in Salinger champagne. to meet the winners. 
race. Firstly, Rebecca Farrow, the winner of the Classic Race Wear. Absolutely stunning. You must be thrilled. I am, absolutely. Can you describe the outfit? You are well coordinated from top to toe. Thank you. The outfit's actually um, made for me by Jan Nico, and it's an Escada fabric, both the jacket and the dress. And uh, the handbag was done by McCody, and my hat was done by Kim Fletcher. And you've got to be happy with your prize. Off to Paris for two, a $10,000 Maya wardrobe, $5,000 spending money, and your weight, which I can't imagine being really great anyway, <laughs> in Salon de Champagne. Congratulations. Thank you. The prizes are fantastic. They are. Well done, you. And also, Penny Key, winner of Classic Hat. It is stunning. Thank Absolutely you. stunning. Can you describe it for us? Uh, it's a Serena Lindemann creation, and um, I think it's just it's fantastic. It stands out. and It um, certainly does. Yeah. You stand tall. Yes, well, the height helps. <laughs> um, and then the clothes, I've just got a Christos suit on, so... Well done. And your prizes? My prizes, I can't wait to go. Heading, <laughs> heading off to Tahiti, so that'll be fantastic. Needed a holiday, so it's great. Well, you both look absolutely fantastic. Congratulations. Well, the 1999 Maya Fashions on the Field competition has been run and won. But never fear, those of us who like to keep up with the latest looks in style, fashion and trends, there's more fashion on Stakes Day coming up on Saturday. Of course, it's family day, so this time it's the turn of the Littleys to parade in their finery. Ages between 6 and 12 are welcome to come along and parade before the judges, as are those between 13 and 17. Come along and join in the fun of the Fashions on the Field competition on Stakes Day. Beautifully done, Lynn Talbot. The ladies there looking very stylish indeed. Well, Peter Donegan has come down to you. 84,000 nearly here today. It is just extraordinary. I just wonder how many of the 84,000 will front to work tomorrow. Oh, I think probably a few of them will, and they might be a bit sheepish too, Tim. Uh, I think there might be a few sickies being taken today. I don't think that there is any other city in the world, Jen, where 84,000 people would turn up to a race meeting on a working day. No, but it is Ladies' Day, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. As it has, what, 6,500 more than Last year. And we have been very lucky with the weather. It's sort of skirted around the racetrack. There's Toledo going up to the gates for the Emirates Classic. He loves this straight course. Stephen Arnold, the rider for Russell Cameron. And he won this last year as well. Uh, he's a terrific sprinter and uh, he did win down the inside rail in the race at Bahrain won. I mean, he won it on the inside, so it was a lot worse going there. He's got a terrific chance in this and uh, he'll always give his best. Good each way chance. Could you run that past me again? <laughs> Number two flavour, Darren Gauchy for John Hawks and they've already taken out the other feature. Well, Darren Gauchy was questioned over his ride of flavour last start. Um, desperate for the 1,200 metres. The barrier's a little worried barrier too, but uh, there with some chance. Kidman's Cove looks well, Jen, but uh, will he figure in the finish? He got a long way back at Flemington. I thought he battled on OK there. It's hard to see him turning the tables here on Far Rain, though. Larry Cassidy, the rider, for Mastic, Damien Oliver. I'd prefer to see uh, this horse after, you know, yeah. it did have that uh, doping problem, so I'd rather see how he comes back. Five, Dantelar, Jimmy Cassidy, your selection. Yes, yeah, so uh, this really all but fell in the sweeps at her last start. And I thought it was a good effort there. She'll get a, a very good run from Barrier 9, and I think she's ready to improve, so she might be the danger. Spargo hasn't done an awful lot since winning the Ascot Vale, but the third to Magic Music was all right. It was, but that Ascot Vale win was unbelievable, yeah. wasn't it? Greg Hall to ride here, nicely weighted. He's some chance. Nine charms seen land, Peter Mertens. Um, this horse hit the line quite well there at Caulfield. Barrier 10, well drawn here, 52 and a half, well weighted, each way chance. I can tell you why Fabiano's son's playing Norton Nort because it's staying at home today, it's having a holiday. <laughs> uh, and so too is Cullen. So charm scene land number nine, we have covered there and we'll take a look at a quick tote call on the uh, nine horse just to see if you fancy it, what it might be paying. It's around about $16 on Super Tab and then we go down to number 10, Far Rain. Brett Preble is the rider for...